audience and your greatness to my radio show. <laughs> and I said, Angel, I don't know how I could ever compete with you because not only are you brilliant and great and just almost a genius, you're also beautiful. And I know I'm beautiful as well but certainly not in that glowing sort of way of angel glory. Some think I glow, but it's actually just sweat because I do that a lot. <laughs> Joining us here today on the show, we have Taryn P. Lupo. Taryn, how are you, buddy? Hey, I'm doing well. I am not no longer a member. I'm going to resign of the KISS Army, and I'm going to join the Angel Clark Army. Did you hear the little promo? Yeah, sure join did. the Angel Clark Army. I, I, I'm already a Maybe member. our promos look terrible. Yeah, the, our what <laughs> promos. <laughs> Taryn, promo. Taryn and I host this show, and of course, everyone listening here to the Angel Clark Show has great taste. Um, you want quality, so I know you're not listeners to the Liberty Cats. <laughs> which is a little show that Taryn and I do in our basement, and then we play back for each other. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll play a little segment for my mom so she can hear it and go, oh, Brian, yeah. you're so talented. Actually, technically, it's, it really is taped in your mom's basement. Yeah, yeah taped <laughs> in my mom's basement. That's actually just not for, accurate. Just for our own amusement and enjoyment. <laughs> that was kind of a fun little show. You can find it. You can find the Liberty Cats page over on Facebook. You can find us uh, just by Googling around. I've also got a lot of the archives up. I used to do a show called The Fajita Fun Time many years ago. We have a special guest with us, Will Coley, hanging out with us. And Will, you remember you were on The Fajita Fun Time a couple of times. Yeah, quite a few times. Yes, you <laughs> sure were, man. We had some fun on that. It was a little train wreck of a show that I would do from my kitchen after drinking way too much Southern Comfort in the evening. I'd be like, hey, let's record a podcast. No, 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 no. That's oh, that's right. You were on me the night I had, I went through this phase of making my own apple pie. And if you don't know what apple pie is, basically, it's like this, uh, it's like a simple syrup you make, and then you just dump a whole bunch of booze in it. And I would do that. I got really good at making it on my stove top. I would, I'd actually go out. Have the, you done this yet? We've been to Fort Fest this long, and I haven't tried this apple pie. I don't have the ingredients, man. I can't, I can't afford cinnamon sticks. <laughs> They're so expensive. They're we need like some a, donors. We really need some donors for our show. If you're listening, we you can't even drink right. Exactly. You, I, I would make this delicious apple wine. Oh, I've, I've shared it with people before, and they're like, "Oh, Brian, you've you've got a real talent making this apple pie." And yeah, I, I just can't afford cinnamon sticks, and you have to have cinnamon sticks to make. It. Dead to me. You're dead to me. All right, let's get back to Will because yeah. Will's an interesting character here. For y'all that don't know Will, and you're just tuning in. If you were to look at him, he's kind of a good old boy. You know, he looks a little country. He's wearing a Tennessee he's hat. Just a good old boy. It's a camouflage <laughs> hat and, you know, a T-shirt. He's spreading his long. And you would kind of think more is... is <laughs> Scaring it, Fox it, News and regular <laughs> people like my mom. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's definitely kind of Uncle Jesse-ish in his younger years, maybe. You know, got the so beard going. Be, you know. and, and so it's a really um, unusual because I want you to talk to our listeners about... How on earth does redneck country boy decide to wake up one day and say, you know, I think I want to be Muslim? Yeah. What where, took, where does that yeah. happen? Now, how did that journey come about in your life, Will Coley? Well, uh, I studied comparative, uh, comparative Western theology uh, for quite a few years before I became Muslim. And uh, I had uh, dabbled in like Ethiopian Orthodox and things like that. And uh, basically, the more that I studied, <laughs> Um, I kind of rejected uh, uh, an idea like a Pauline uh, Christianity. Like it was like, oh, this, this guy he wrote like two thirds of the New Testament, but he never met anybody else that was in there. And the ones that he did meet, didn't really like it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I've rejected that too. I've become an anarcho Christian because of that. So I guess our journey, to some degree, is the same. But anyway, yeah. continue on, Will. But uh, there were just there's some some, some some strange things that kind of happened in my life and weird coincidences. I ended up with this ring that like had a lot of Arabic writing on it. I thought I was smart and I decided to like go see if I was as smart as I thought I was. And then a little bit of investigation I found out that the ring itself is only made by one distributor. Oh wow. Uh, in Egypt. It's not sold by any company in the US. So a person living in Egypt would have had to purchase it. Um, but it ended up in my hands because it was dropped in a parking lot in Gainesville by I don't know who and picked up by I don't know who and given to my brother-in-law at his job 30 miles down the road. They just walk in and he's like, I just found this in the parking lot at a gas station up the street. You look like it's something that you would like. <laughs> and like, he's like gothed out, long black hair, the big skull and crossbones belt buckle. And uh, he gives it to me when I come in. He's like, hey man, like you let me borrow that big green book you've got. Because, you know, I study comparative religion. And uh, I think some of this writing's from it, you know, so he hands it to me. And uh, that's how it ended up in my hands. And when I 
went to the distributor cast inside of the ring. Like it looks kind of like a class ring. Uh -huh. um, in the thick part right here, there's actually a small piece of parchment that's rolled up and the word, uh, a verse from the Quran, uh, God guides those whom he wills, is written on it and rolled up and embedded in the ring. Interesting. It's almost yeah. magical, you know. It just, it kind of spoke to me and brought me. Sort of Frodo? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is. More Frodo. <laughs> I, I, I ended up in a, in a mosque of, uh, a month later, um, mostly just to see if, because like I said, I had studied independently for a few years. So you were just going to check it out to see, you know, what they said 